let's talk about the 1970s. Mm. Um, your writing clearly reflected what was happening in, during the 70s. Uh, what, what, what were your feelings then about Jamaica? Well, the fact of the matter was that in the 70s, the PNP, the Manly government, was ruining Jamaica. They were destroying the tourist trade. We had quite a good uh, economy up to about 1969. And the PNP regime proceeded to destroy the country. That's really what it amounted to. And um, I was threatened constantly for writing against it. And my stepchildren and my second marriage were being threatened too. And so in 19, I think now, about 1976, 1977, my New York publisher offered me the job of being editor to his publishing house. Actually, he had been offering that job to me before, but I wouldn't go. But in 1976, he said to me, I think you're ready now, and I went over to America and took that job. Uh, but I came back afterwards. I got homesick. I, I think, I, I didn't think it was, I enjoyed the job very much. But um, I thought really my place was back home. But you, you, you left, why did you leave? I mean, you left for the job or did you feel as if... Jamaica no, well, I thought been... at the time that Jamaica was going to hell. So I thought I'd better get out of it. I didn't want... I thought there was quite a risk of it going communist. But our friend Castro was just around the corner. There were an awful lot of damn nonsense was going on in there, that area. You know, people are now trying to back out of it and say this was a great era, era, and this and that. It wasn't. It, it was a very bad era for Jamaica. And it destroyed so much in Jamaica that we've not recovered its form yet. I, I felt very strongly about it. And I wrote very strongly against it. And as I say, I got plenty of threats from my pains. Weekly threats, daily threats sometimes. But in the 1970s, you, 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 wrote, you wrote very vehemently about the, uh, what was happening at that time. You yourself w were an MP uh, in, in, the, in the Federal Labour Party. Or yes, I, I was when, when um, yes, I was a, a member of Parliament for, for the JLP uh, during Federation. That was, of course, in the early, uh, early, late 50s, early 60s. And what were the issues then? What were? What were the issues back then when you were an MP? Well, it, the, the issue at the time, of course, was whether to federate or not to federate. Uh, I was very much against federation, I must tell you, at, in the early stages. And um, because I thought it was a cynical attempt by the colonial office to push on to Jamaica and Trinidad the expenses of looking after the smaller islands. But when uh, Trinidad, uh, federation finally happened, I got, quite by accident, selected as a St. Mary a member for Parliament, uh, for, for the Federal Parliament. And, um, By accident? Well, entirely, yes. What, what happened was I was told to attend a meeting, big, about 400 people down at Richmond, by an old chap called Schleifer, uh, to select a candidate for St. Mary. And I was told that I had to, uh, to propose a man called Francis, who was a very nice man. So I said, yes, I would. I was not in politics. I, I, I didn't think about it. Anyway, I went down to please old Schleifer. And uh, when I got the meeting, huge meeting, he said, all right, now propose Francis. So I did. And there was a deathly hush. I didn't know. I thought, I thought, I didn't know. I was so unpopular. And two other people proposed two other people. And finally, the little man got up in the phone and said, look, yes, sir. It's only me some other scare. We're going to have. And the next thing I knew was, they forced me in, in, in representing the, the, the party. Uh, I was nearly died of fright. Uh, I told them I was the wrong person, wrong color, all that sort of thing. And they said, no, it didn't matter. And uh, finally, they said, your foot not going to touch not it will be a, a lack, you, sir. <laughs> and they picked me up, pushed me in my car. When I got home, with my collar all undone and so on, yeah. my wife said to me, good God, you've been in a fight. I said, no, I've just been selected as a federal candidate. <laughs> She said, you must be mad. I said, I think I am. <laughs> Still, as I was in it, I decided I'd better learn how to fight the election. Mm -hmm. And I won. 
And and you went to Trinidad for a while. Oh yes, I was down there mm -hmm. for about three or four years. I took the job. I discontinued my Greener column, of course, and uh, but I I was employed uh, to be editor of a paper called The Guardian. And besides Federation, what were the issues of the day for the Caribbean and for Jamaica? Well, there was nothing. The Federation was a nonsense. You see, what the real problem was that it wasn't Federation at all. Had it had been a true federation, it would have meant having a central, strong central government somewhere, and all the other islands just constituencies. But no, all the islands joined. It was really a condominium. Everybody joined. They had their own prime ministers, their own ministers of finance, and everything. They were like a lot of horses pulling a cart to pieces in, in different directions, and um, it, 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 it didn't mean anything. It, they didn't do anything useful because there was nothing useful for them to do. And uh, so after a while, I went back to Jamaica, and I saw the chief, Bustamante, who was the head of my party, and I said, look, chief, you know, there's a lot of damn nonsense where to come out of it. He said, he said Boris, I, I come to that conclusion long ago. So you were the one that caused the GLP not to... No, I wouldn't say I was. No, he, no Buster, Buster had come to that conclusion quite a, bit, a, while, a while ago. I merely confirmed him. And uh, so he... Decided that he decided that the, and Manley was was very good. Manley saw that there was a lot of discontent about this, and decided to call a referendum. Do you think no that you could have been wrong about your decision then? No, uh, federation is a hopeless mistake. Well, given the the, the shrinking of the of uh, well, the world is shrinking. There's there's NAFTA. There is there is uh, the the European yes, Union. Look, uh, well, what I'm trying to say. Is if it had been a true federation, that would have been a different kettle of fish. But what the creature we had, which was called federation, was not a federation, it was a condominium. And it could never have worked. If a new federation was proposed, it might well work if, if, it, if it was a proper federation. But not if it was going to be another condominium. Do you think CARICOM may have been the answer to, to, to that? No. All Caricom does is to give some of our, po uh, our politicians free, free trips all around the place. I know what Caricom does. But we can't stand out here by ourselves. Jamaica cannot stand alone. Neither can any Caribbean island. We, we need to they can't stand together. They, they, if, they, if they hang together, if they, they're going to hang, whether they hang together or hang separately. Uh, look. But do you have any hope for, for the Caribbean at all? Lots of hope, because a lot of the islands are doing extraordinarily well. Mm -hmm. Barbados, for instance, a marvelous little island. Trinidad's doing pretty well. Even some of the only island, the only two islands that are not doing well, are, are Gu Guyana and um, Jamaica. And well, Guyana is on a growth path. And their last figures show that they are on a growth path. Yes, oh yes. Okay. I think Guyana, you see, Guyana is an enormous country. Enormous country, about, I don't know, it's seven times the size of Jamaica. And, um, it has enormous uh, resources, untapped resources, and that it could be greatly developed. So could Jamaica, but uh, we, uh, we just got off on the wrong foot. That's what worries me. And I don't know how we're ever going to get back on again. No answers? No solution? My dear, how can I have the solution? I, I can't, I, I'm not God, you know, I can't solve these things. I, all, I'm, I'm just a columnist, I have to observe them. I'm not, I'm not supposed to solve them. I don't know what the solution is. Well, I know this, that our people had better start getting honest and getting a bit more discipline. And if we do that, maybe we'll get on fine. But right at the moment, we're, we're thieves and in the undisciplined criminals. How can we get on with, with, the, with the criminality we have and the murder rate we have in the country? How do you expect people to come here and invest in the country? Don't you see any positives about Jamaica? I try to think positive about everything. What are some of the positives? But I have to... Well, it's a beautiful country and it has a lot of very fine people in it. It also has a lot of very nasty people in it. The question is, are the good people going to get on top of the nasty people, or, or vice versa? I don't know. The only time will tell. Thank you.